Welcome to LabMist.com in our lab video series on IPv6 on Cisco Router. You can find a complete list of IPv6 video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we're going to look at how we can use HSRP v6 to replace the built-in mechanism of IPv6 to provide the first hop redundancy. So we're going to look at HSRP v6 configuration using both autoconfig and static virtual IP. And then we're going to do some failover testing as well. For our lab setup, we're still using the same topology from our previous lab with R1 and R2 being a default routers for the subnet with R3 and Windows 7 for our test and device. But now we're going to enable HSRP on R1 and R2, and we're going to use both autoconfig and hard coding the virtual IP to FE801. Let's start off with our task number one, which is the HSRP v6 configuration with autoconfig. So we are going to enable HSRP v6 on both R1 and R2 using version 2, and then we're going to use these parameters with priority 110 for R1, 105 for R2, enable preemption for R1 with 10 second delay, enable authentication with key Cisco, and then interface tracking on R1 and make sure failover happens when the interface goes down, and then we'll test failover as well. So let's start off with our configuration on R1. You can see the configuration with uh, HSRP v6 is very similar to the regular HSRP that you might have already been familiar with. And we still use the standby command. With question mark and see a lot of options that you see here should really look familiar to you. So the first thing we're going to enable version 2, and that's just to give us the extended group number range all the way up to the 4095. Although we're just going to match to our VLAN number, which is 123 in this case. And then we have to specify virtual IP. And we have two choices here. One is to hard code it to the IP of your choice. Or we can just let the router figure that out using autoconfig. So we're going to go ahead and use autoconfig for now. And then we do standby 123. We say we're going to set the priority of R1 to 110. By default, it's 100. Then we're going to enable preemption with delay of minimum, let me see, uh, it said right here, 10 second. And then we're going to enable authentication. And we're just going to do plain text of Cisco. And we also want to track the interface, which is our serial 001 that connects to R5. So track. 001 0 and we want to decrement by 10 because we're going to have the priority on R2 of 105 so anything that's more than decrement of 5 would do the drop here and now if you hop onto R3 and do show actually before I do that or now I want to show standby brief and here I can see the virtual IP that was chosen by the router and currently since we haven't really configured R2 the only active router or HSRP router is R1. That's why I said active local and priority is 110. Okay, now on R3, if you do show IPv6 routers, here it ends with 7B, so let's look for that. So 3398, that's the link local address for R2, but here for R1, it's already changed to the virtual link local IP. And we can just compare that by doing show IPv6 interface. You can see the actual link local IP address for R1 is ends with 5280, but instead R3 is seeing it as and ending with 7B, which is the virtual IP. So now let's go ahead and complete our configuration on R2. Clear that. And then under interface F00, do standby version 2 also, and then standby group 1, 2, 3 with IP v6, auto config. And then we change the priority to 105 with preemption, but no delay, and then authentication of Cisco, plan text. So have to give it a second, and then do show standby brief. Here it has already detected the active HSRP router. You can see it's a link local of R1, 5280. And it just turned from speed to standby. So you can see here we have standby local with the priority 105. And obviously it must agree on the virtual IP that was created as part of the autoconfig. 
So now if you go back to R3 and do show IPv6 routers, or actually just show IPv6 router, here instead of seeing both router show up, it's now it's been pretty much consolidated to just to one router advertisement. And this is because both R1 and R2 agrees upon the link local address and they collaborate and make sure that only one virtual IP is advertised as part of the router advertisement. Okay, and you can tell that it's this one is coming from R1 because the preference has been set to high in our previous video while the R2 we left at default, which was medium. Okay, now if we ping, or actually, uh, yeah, let's try to ping 2001.5, which is R5, loopback address over here, which is like two hops away. You can see it's successfully ping, and if you trace 2001.5, you can see it went through R1 as the next hop, which is uh, apparently our active at just RP router. So now let me bring up the Windows 7 test machine and we're going to run Wireshark to capture some of the packets just to see what it looks like. And let's pick this interface right here. And then we're going to look at the IP config all. And for our LAN 2, here our IPs are obtained from the DSCP v6. But for our default gateway, you can see it shows up as ending with 7B, which is again our virtual IP for our HSRP. So Windows 7 no longer sees it as a two separate router on the subnet or default router on the subnet as well. And if you do route print, you can see we have a a single, although it shows up as two entry here, but it's essentially a same default route that's pointing to the same default gateway using their virtual IP. And now let's uh, stop Washark real quick and see if we can find a router advertisement. It looks like we didn't capture any, so let me do this. Let me stop this. All right, looks like we just caught it in time. So here router advertisement is coming from source IP of the link local address of virtual address of the HSRP 7B. And when you look inside the packet, it looks pretty much identical as the regular router advertisement from a router. And obviously this one is coming from R1 and the flags and everything is set according to R1. Okay, with the prefix and MTUs and pretty much the same content on the packet. Okay, and if you look at the here, hello messages, and this one is coming from R1 with the 5280 for the IP address. See, it's being sent to a FF20, which is the link local multicast address space using the 66 IP. Here's the port shows up is 2029 for the HSRP v6. Let's take a quick look at the content. It's version 2, group number 123, IPv6, state is being active, identify is its own MAC address, priority is 110. Hello default is three seconds with the whole time of 10 seconds and the virtual IP of ending with 7B. And one of the TLV is for authentication purposes of Cisco. We also see another one for standby. This is being sent from R2. Content is pretty much the same. The only difference is the priority 105. Everything, it looks the same. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do a failover test. So what we're going to do is to shut down the interface that we are currently tracking, or the R1 is tracking, which is 0001. So in R1, get under the interface, and then shut down. And then we can do show standby brief. And here you can see the priority got lower or decremented by 10. So it went down from 110 to 100. And now since it's lower than 105, which is what R2 has, it's become a standby. So standby local. And if you hop onto R2 and do show standby briefed, we see the local is active. Just do show standby. You can see a, a little bit more detail as far as the virtual IP, MAC address, and pretty much the same information that contains what we just saw in the packets and Wireshark. 
Okay, so from R3, do a quick trace route. And now the first hop becomes R2. Maybe do show IPv6 routers. And here, these are the router advertisement message that R3 received from R2. And then you can notice right here, the preference has become medium instead of high that was set on R1. But as far as the router R3 is concerned, the next top IP or the default gateway IP stays the same, which is the HSRP virtual address. Okay, so let's go back to R1 and return, or bring the interface back up. So now that we have successfully tested the failover, let's move on to our task number two, which is HSRP v6 configuration using a static virtual IP. Okay, so we're going to configure now instead of using auto config to hard code the IP to FE80, which is the link local IP with the one at the end. So going back on R1 with fast Ethernet 00, and then standby 123 IPv6. FE80 and just make a little note here we're using the link local address and not global address. Okay, so copy that and move on to R2, paste, give it a couple seconds. At this point, if you do show IPv6 routers, here you can see how the virtual IP has been changed from what we had previously to the one we just configured, which is FE801. And the preference went back to high, which as we know is coming from R1. And if you do show IPv6 neighbor, you can see the IP address right here is that shows up. That's mapped to the virtual MAC address compared to the one that we had previously right here. So these are the virtual MAC address produced as part of the HSRP. So that, that MAC address never changed. Now if you traced 2001.5, you can see it's using R1 as the first hop. So we're good to go. Now if you go on to Windows 7 and do a another IP config all, then we expect the default gateway to change as well to FE801. And if you do a route print, we should be seeing the same thing right here. Okay, so since this is a link local IP address that we're using, which is only locally significant to the subnet, you can obviously use the exact same virtual IP on all of the subnets or VLANs that you have, unlike back in the regular edges RP, it has to be the actual interface IPs. But here with IPv6, we have a concept of link local and that's how it's, and that's the IP that's being used for edges RP. So you no longer needs to use the global IPv6 address, which is for example, a 2100123 that we have here. So just for a quick comparison of just RPv6 to the native IPv6 that to provide the first hop redundancy with just RP, the end host does not need to be aware of the state of all the default routers or gateway, and then have to pick the default gateway to use based on that reachability information by itself. Since it will only receive the single just RP virtual IP, then it will be consistent regardless of you know, which default gateway or router is up and being used. Okay, so that wraps up our video on IPv6 HSRP or HSRP v6. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmiss.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.